So, as we move along in terms of our life safety devices, we started with our intrusion devices and we went through most of the common ones there. We're now showing you how you can get added value out of your security system by not only protecting against intrusion, but also against environmental or life safety types of emergencies. We've done our 5808W3 smoke and heat detector. We've done our 5806W3 smoke detector only. And this is a Honeywell 5809 wireless heat detector. Okay, this device will not detect from smoke, but will detect from both fixed heat, if it gets above 135 degrees, and beyond doing that, which the 5808W3 also does, it will also detect if the temperature in the room rises more than 15 degrees per minute. That's called rate of rise. So you have your fixed heat detector, and your rate of rise heat detector. So this heat detector is better than the heat detector in the 5808W3, but it's a single heat detector only. Um, so it would be used in, in areas which could be dusty and would then set off the smoke detector portion of the 5808W3. Um, so garages, workshops, um, places like that, the 5808W3 is a good, uh, I'm sorry, the 5809 is a good option, heat detector only. This is a mechanical heat detector on the fixed heat, and I'd like to point out that a 5809 mechanical heat detector, if activated, this top piece, be very careful with this disc, if ever activated, this pops out and is a one-time use only. So if it ever did get above 135 in your room, this device would activate the alarm, it's done its job, and you'd have to re then replace the device. The rate of rise is, is not something that would activate the mechanical portion here, and therefore you could use, if it was a rate of rise heat alarm, it could continue to work. Um, you've got all over it showing you 135 is the degrees and that it does rate of rise. But again, keep in mind, if 135 degree fixed heat detector is triggered, you need to get a new 5809. This is a one-time use only on the fixed heat activation. This device consists of the, smoke, the heat detector head. You've got your wireless transmitter antenna. You've got your battery holster. You've got your test button. And you've got your tamper test. And then you've got your mounting. This slides in. and twists shut so that when it's mounted, your tamper's held down and it's happy and ready to detect. So we're gonna show you how to program this 5809 detector to your L7000 Lynx Touch panel. You've got your Panasonic CR123A, which is the most common battery uh, used with most of the Honeywell sensors. You've seen this battery used in our 5816, and the 5800 PIR res motion detector, same style battery for the 5809. So before we can program it, we have to have power to the unit. The battery, you have a plus indicator here, a minus indicator here. It's faint, but it's into the plastic there. Uh, I don't know if it's picking up on the video, but you'll see it when you're doing it. And you simply slide in the battery. Now we have power. Now we're ready to enroll. We're going to use the serial number which is showing in two spots. You have your uh, barcode sticker, alpha number with seven digit number, and you have without the barcode, alpha seven digit number there as well. Both are uh, the same number and always should match, and that's the number you use to program the device. To program, we go into security. We hit more to access the tools menu. And when we hit tools, we're prompted for our code. We're looking for the installer code. 4112 is the default installer code, and we are now able to select program, zones, and we're going to keep our types of sensors together. So we have our downstairs smoke, downstairs cold temp. Our 5808W3 allowed us to, to set up two different zones, one for the smoke and heat and one for the low temperature. We have our upstairs smoke detector for our 5806W3, and we're gonna go ahead and choose new, edit, and we're gonna use zone 14 at the top here for our 5809 
heat detector, which we're going to put in our garage. Uh, we've got a wood shop in there, it gets dusty, that would trigger a smoke detector, and therefore we want to use a heat only for times where there's a real fire in that area and the temperature, either rate of rise gets, that gets 15 degrees or more in a minute or uh, gets above 135. So we click into serial number first. There should be two ways we can key this in. We can hit the test button three times or we can key in the serial number uh, on the sticker. So test button once, test button twice, or three times. <laughs> Activating the smoke and, smoke and heats with the test button as you've seen on our other videos, that can be a little temperamental. It's supposed to be three, but you're using the test button. It did the job. You can verify 0249918 is the, is, the, is the serial number for this device. It is loop number one, which is the proper loop. If you look in the install guide, it references that loop and we're ready to finish our programming. While on the 5808 W3 and the 5806 W3, we chose smoke detector, because this is a heat only, we wanna select heat sensor. You'll notice on the heat, you don't get the option for no verification versus with verification. That's just because on a heat detector, there really should be no false alarms, right? If it gets above 135, you know, unless something crazy is going on in the room, it should be a fire. Smoke detectors, because there can be smoke when it's not a real fire, or at least not a real fire emergency, um, that's why the smoke gives you the option for both. A heat, you want to, every time it's activated, you want that sending that alarm out. So we're going to do fire no verification, which is the only option we have. The last thing we want to do, even though this is going to be the only heat that we have in our house, we want to give anybody that might be getting the alarms the indication of where it is. We hit the G to go to our G words, and we either hit the down arrow till we get to garage, or we just type out the word garage. Yes, garage. As soon as we hit G-A-R, this is the first alphabetical word that starts with G-A-R, so we're good. Done. And we have our serial number with our loop number one, garage heat sensor, fire no verification, Alarm report, yes, we want this alarm from this sensor to send to our central station. Chime is disabled. You don't even have the option to choose a chime because, again, there's no faulting of this device. It's a 24-hour device. If it goes into alarm mode, it's an alarm. There's no faulting. Supervision supervised. If this device is not being seen by the panel or if uh, the serial number was entered in wrong or there was interference from this device to the panel, Every 12 hours, this panel will check for this device as well as all devices that are programmed, and it would throw up a supervision fault on zone 14, letting you know, hey, there's something wrong with the way this is installed or where it's mounted or something with the device is bad. So you would save it. You can see we have our garage heat sensor learned in. And if we exit out, before we fully exit, um, so we can put... Uh, we can put our head on here, but if, but if we do that, we lose the ability to hit the test button. So before we do that, we want to make sure this thing's working. So we're going to exit to the home screen, and we're going to hit our RF test button. We got our fire alarm. Disarmed. Ready to arm. Check. Disarmed. Ready to arm. Check zone. The first dis Chime. the first disarm cut off the siren. The second disarm cleared out the fire alarm. The only reason it's still indicating a problem is because the cover or the uh, head is not set on the base. So we now have a tamper. So the RF test button indicated yes, we pro programmed it properly. Activating this device triggers our L7000 panel. Because we did the double disarm to clear out the alarm, it's only indicating now that there's a problem being that the tamper. So um, the tamper is important. You want to make sure it's closed up properly. So now, now that we've tested it, if we put the head on properly and we twist it shut, that snaps the tamper and holds it down. And disarming the panel. Disarmed. Ready to arm. 
just Charged. as expected, ready to arm, chime. The tamper trouble's gone. Our 5809 is properly programmed to our Lynx Touch L7000 panel. So that is the programming of a 5809 to our Lynx Touch L7000 for heat detection. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be kept up to date with all of our programming, product release, and website update videos. And uh, keep an eye on the channel uh, as we continue to, to produce more of these videos showing you how to properly use your Honeywell security system.